All right. So first thing I'm going to do is calibrate this thing. All right. Hit the calibrate button. Hold the hand out like this. It's in position. Boom. In position. So we are calibrated. All right, so what this thing does is this device, it lets us know whether our wrist is this way, which is called extension, mm -hmm. or this way, which is called flexion, and how much. So when you look at that iPad, that screen, you can see like when I hold a club, I'm probably going to be in a good amount of extension. Okay. So when I take my normal grip, you can see I've got 25 degrees of extension or so. This, some of this right here. Okay. Is that what it should be? Well, everyone's grip is a little bit different than everybody else's. Even the best golfers in the world, some of them are going to have a very different grip. But think of it like this. If I change this extension and flexion, angle. See how my club face can like move around? Right? Yeah. So if at setup, I'm at right there's 22 degrees, right? If I get to the top of my backswing and I have the same amount, my club face is going to be square relative to me because it was square when it was out in front of me down here. So if I start off at, get my regular grip on here. So there I'm 21 degrees, and I get up here and I give a lot of extension. What's happening is, I'm going to do it this way so she can see. What's happening is I do this, my face is opening. So as I add a bunch of extension, 56 degrees, my face gets wide open. So here, that is extension wide open. That will be flexion, me closing it. All right. So all we're establishing is this thing helps us know where our wrist is at setup and at the top. Does it make sense that at the top of your swing, you'd like your face to be square? Right? Yeah. The thing is, how do you feel that? Right? So... Most people, who, would anyone open their face on purpose in their backswing? Not on purpose. No. Would you close it on purpose? No, you'd want to be square, right? So I take, I, I go and hit a shot. Not a bad looking shot, right? <laughs> but look at what happened on, see it's showing what's happening on our, on our app? So what happened is that I started off with 24 degrees of extension, but at the top I was at 67 degrees of extension. So I got really, really open at the top. So how did I manage to hit the ball pretty much straight? I did something to make it work. Yeah, I did something to make it work. Okay? So am I losing you? It's not that you're losing me, but it's, it's like how did you do it? How did I hit it straight? Yeah. I mean, if you're at one angle here and another one up here, how did it come through? Come so I had to compromise. I probably had to compromise efficiency to make a compensation, right? So to just let you know what I actually did was I made sure, because we're demonstrating here, I wanted to make sure that that thing was open. So I really, I did that. Mm -hmm. See that face? I was wide open. Yeah. Would you please, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I, just, I just want to watch. So you. stand back there next to Maria so you can oh, see my I club face. Well, oh, you can see that. I want you to see my club face, too. Oh, I want to see that. Okay. Okay. Right? So, when I go to the top, I'm, I'm not going to hit this. Right? So, there, I'm about 20, 24. I started at 24. Okay. That's the way that I hit the shot, more like this. So, I've opened my club face way up. See that? 
So look, I can go from here and square it. I could even hit it left. I can do it. Hand-eye coordination. You know, I may have to fall back a little bit. I have to flip down through here, but I can physically do it. But it's not going to be very efficient. If I got really good at the top of my backswing, so if I'm starting off at, what, 21, 22? And if I get up here and I can get it about the same, whoop, now I don't have to make a big compensating move to square it up at the bottom. Make sense? Makes sense, yes, it does. Right? Right. So what's really cool about this, and like Phil and I have worked on this, is that when you look at video, right, it's hard to tell on video. So I'm looking here, it's 30, 31 degrees? Yeah. Right? That's 39. On video, I don't know how much of that is super noticeable with a video camera. But are you comfortable when it's, when, when you're in your, the top of your swing, can you feel that it's not square? Um, I'm, I'm pretty close to square usually, but I can tell you this, when I'm doing this slowly and I'm not going to hit a ball, I'm probably going to be different than when I'm actually hitting shots. Because when I'm hitting shots, I'm going to revert into what my brain knows I can pull off. Okay. Right? So, so I'm going to go ahead and hit one just normally and see what it looks like. Okay? Okay, so that ball was pretty straight, right? So look at the top. I, I was, CSS plus seven. Mm -hmm. So here's the kicker. So the hack motion people, what they've done is they have figured out by analyzing really, really good players, right? How much deviation there is at the top of someone's backswing who's a really good golfer. And what they found is a really good player will have Maybe they'll have five degrees more, ext more extension than they started with, all the way up to 10 degrees of more flexion. So really good players don't give, they don't change too much, right? And they tend to get, you know, good players can get a little mo bit more this way, but not as much that way. Yes. So Those are, those are factory set like recommend. Now you can get into like the advanced menu and pick some stuff out, right? But, and what it's doing is it's basing it on my setup. So you can see at setup, I had 20 degrees of extension on that swing. So on that swing, I get my little, my little pie piece, my little window for that swing. And the pie piece is I'm going to be in good shape if I'm between 25 degrees of extension and 10 degrees of extension. If I had set up with 25 degrees of extension, it would say, okay, you're going to be good between 30 degrees of extension and 15 degrees of extension. So every swing, it looks at where you should be because it's relative to your setup, to your starting grip. So that way, somebody who has a strong grip or somebody who has a weaker grip can both use this thing and it's effective right from the beginning. It doesn't force every single person to have the same exact grip. So one thing that will happen is, and you know, this is something we've seen all along, like people say, well, what should I look like up here? They'll see on video that they've got some extension here, and they think it's wrong. But they never take into account how they started. So if somebody started with a grip that's got a lot of extension, well, then at the top, they would have more extension. If they started where they were like literally in flexion, Right? So if I get some, some grip, I'm literally in flexion here. So I'm minus four, minus two, right? At the top, I should be like in the, in the negatives. Right. right? So just this whole idea of helping people be able to do better at the top of their backswing, what it does, it incentivizes them to make a better downswing. That's a super simple way to look at this. So, uh, so like on a, on a, a, a younger golfer or a tour player where they're, they're at parallel, right? Uh huh. Is that, when they stop, is that where their top of the swing is in relation to this when they move? Yeah, it is a way of figuring out where the actual top is, and it's based on the backswing and the downswing. It, it's not based on, like, this sort of a thing. Yeah, so, so, like, here, if you're in range, that's great. Here, if you stay in range still, you're great. 
So you're right. So if I made a really small swing here, it would it would factor my it would factor wherever the, the, the change of direction is, right? Okay. So that's really not a factor how long someone's swing is in this thing. Okay. Now, how do we help people do this if they're not, like I've been playing golf forever. I, I can kind of manipulate stuff because I have a pretty good feel, right? So what it does is it helps us. It has this audio feedback version. Okay. So that I want to hear, oh, hear that? I want to hear that at the top of the backswing. Okay? It's not really useful hitting full shots, but it is useful trying to get the feel. So it, here I am now. So it's 21 degrees. Now, if I'm doing this and I'm getting this all the time, it's like, okay, what's wrong? I'll look, I'll say, okay, well, address, it probably wanted about 20 to address. I see him plus 38, I guess I gotta go this way with it. And what I did was I went closer to deflection. Yeah. Shoot, what's wrong? Ah, there it is. Ah, great question. Do you have to hear the music all the way up? Not necessarily. No, just at the top. Just right. So there's a little graph in here, and it'll show you when you get if you. At first, I know I don't like looking at graphs, but in the graph, it shows you like in a line graph. Here's your your setup. Here's your top of backswing. Here's your impact, and it shows you okay, 20 degrees extension, right? That'll show you maybe gets you more into flexion, then back up about 20 degrees extension. Then it shows in your downswing what happens. It goes usually down towards flexion and then back up towards extension because at the bottom is a little bit of that happening, right? But that's a little bit past what we need to talk about. The big thing that I like about this is it helps us feel if we're doing how we're doing with that club face there. Right? Yep. All the time, yeah. So, so it would seem to me that a lot of them would have a problem with impact being out of whack. Right. Well, here's the first thing. If you're out of whack up here, you're going to have a hard time getting impact. And what I've found is generally, uh, especially a single, a single digit handicapper, especially a single digit, they may be out of whack at the top, but they're looking pretty good at impact. But there's some inconsistency in their ball striking. And one thing that could definitely help them would have their club face more square at the top. So what's going on if they're good here, but they're bad here? What, what's going on? So, well, let's talk about that, right? So let's say I'm good at the top, I'm bad at the bottom, right? So I'm going to make a swing where I don't move a lot of weight into my front foot, or my, my kinematic sequence, sequence is off. So by kinematic sequence, I mean I'm, just, I'm going to start my downswing more with my upper body than my lower body, okay? And hopefully I can do a good job at the top. So let's, let's turn that noise off for now. Okay. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to, try to make a, a, a good backswing, but just not get through it on the downswing. I'm going to start more with the upper body. Okay, isn't that interesting? So at the top, I was a little bit open, right? At the bottom, I got in the range that they want. Okay, let me try it again. And the swing was terrible, right? So I, I just tried to flip the club at the bottom, noticeably, that's all. So you can see, I'm thinking about what I'm doing at impact. But something changed way before that, right? So I was trying at the bottom just to do this for an example, but I also made a difference at the top. 
right? So the indications are this controls a lot of what's happening. Well, it's just feel is not real, and sometimes when you try to do something, you do it late or early or something like that. But let's talk about specifically impact now, right? Okay. Let me just hit one more wall and see if I can hit a normal shot where I'm pretty good at the top. Okay. Okay. All right. So the top I was pretty good. An impact that was pretty good. It's showing us a little too much of that. An impact. Just one degree. We'll take that. Um, let's just say we have trouble with impact. Right. So I'm going to put this back into that training mode. The, the, the audio training mode. So it's looking more for a positive number. No. no. So it's looking. Your impact, you always want more flexion at impact than you had a setup. Right. Okay. okay. So what it's saying is based on a 23 degree setup. So that's some cupping. That's some extension. Does it make sense what I'm saying here? Yeah. So, based on 23 degrees of extension, top of back swing, it wants me to have between 13 and 28 at the top. Impact, it wants me to have between 8 degrees of extension, which is about like this, down to 7 degrees of flexion, which is here. It's not a very big range. But you stay in the negative. You want to stay in the negative. Well, I, I want to be... On that range, it's always negative. Zero, from anywhere from 7 negative to 8 positive. Yes, yeah, so there's a range, right? There's a range where you want to be in, right? So how do you work on getting impact better, right? Well, you can do a drill like this. Turn the sound back on. But now I'm going to change the impact. Okay, so now I'm going to get feedback based on impact. So see I'm not getting anything, but it's not looking for top of action, it's looking for impact. Now if I look over here, I'm plus 13, plus 12, so I'm, I'm in range, right? Ready? So now. Nope. So I want to be So to help me get it, so this is a little advantage of playing, you know, being an okay golfer. I tried to get it, so I went to my natural impact because my natural impact tends to be pretty close, right? So now I'm, I feel like I'm really getting a lot of flexion here, but I'm not hearing anything. I'm going to look and see minus 22 because that's like way, way, way too much flexion. Now it's okay to have too much flexion and find it. All right. Now, just in my own experience on this, in working with people, um, a lot of times people don't turn really well. And by getting them to turn better, their wrists tend to be in better position, so their club face is in better position. So when someone doesn't turn very much, right, like this, like you can kind of get them. See how this is definitely not looking athletic or really solid, right? But if I'm turning, it's a little bit better. So. So what I would say is like using one of these things, like Phil has one, and then we do lessons once in a while, so he can work on it at home, and then he can get some clarification here as to maybe why things are working and why they're, they're not working, right? So it is not, I don't think it's really smart to think only about what your wrists are doing, because then you're just manipulating the club with your hands, potentially. Usually to really get the wrists working correctly, being able to turn well, is a factor too. Make sense? What I'm saying? Right? Yeah, you can see how like making a small movement, slow movement, and you can have that feel. Like you can actually recognize that feel of having the wrist in the body. Right. So in our golf classes, you know our group golf classes, 
you may notice we're always, I'm going to turn this off. We're always talking about takeaway, right? And about club face. Okay. So usually when people first come out, we see this. Club face is open like this. Incidentally, when someone doesn't turn well in their backswing, they tend to hinge a lot more here. Well, the more that I hinge, if you look at that, the numbers there, the more that I cock my wrist and hinge, I'm going to tend to get more extension. The less I do it, I'm going to tend to have less. Okay? So how we do this stuff is a factor, and like the pro version gets into all that. All right? So when we're looking at you guys back to in golf classes, usually we're guarding against this. So we're usually having you guys think about, hey, when you get that club back to here, you want the face of the club matching up with your spine. And then you keep turning, you'd be in pretty good shape. Make sense what we're talking about? Right? Who wants to try it? So what's the motorcycle drill? I saw it when I was looking at it online. What, what, what does that do? So motorcycle drill is what I was kind of doing. The thing is, you know what I don't like about the motorcycle drill? You, your motorcycle drill is your, is your right wrist doing that, right? Yeah. And it, this has us doing a lot more like this way with your left hand. So if you ride a bike, you're kind of like, eh, I don't know about that. But, but the idea is taking it back more this way if someone's got too much extension, right? And the way down, they're feeling this. Like you're revving a motorcycle, right? If you rode a, if they made a left-handed motorcycle, to turn the throttle off. Anyway, so um, that also gets into the release a little bit because the release is going to be a move kind of like this, right? Although, literally, when you get down there, there, you do go from a certain amount of flexion to less flexion. Pop. See what's happening there? So I get a ton of flexion, and then I get less. So that's what actually literally happens. It, you don't release it like this. Well... You know, we don't, we don't, we don't, we've seen people that get into this handle drag like that way, and we don't, we don't really want to. Sometimes you may have to try to do it, but we don't want to end up there for real. Something else to think about. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. And let's try this out a little bit.